Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Today we're looking at an old Johan kit. This is one that I picked up in John Harry's estate after he passed away. This is the Johan 1960 DeSoto Adventure Hardtop in 125th scale. Another really cool old kit. This is a USA Oldies edition, so lots of fun. Now let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now let's wind the clock all the way back to 1960 as we check out this amazing DeSoto Adventurer. Really cool car. Pretty much the last year of DeSoto in the real world. Take a look at this wonderful box art. We have this wall in behind with this floor down below. And our car is in sort of a metallic pink rose type of color with a white roof and some nice white walls and hubcaps. On this side of the box you can see some of the many parts in this detailed kit. So we have a detailed engine, windshield washer, washer bag, gear shift turn signal and tachometer assembly, a radiator, a battery, radio, aerial, spotlight, seat belts, rear view mirror and the Chrysler torsion bars. And on this side of the box, we have more available USA Oldies, 1963 Oldsmobile Starfire Hardtop, 69 AMX by American Motors, 1961 Oldsmobile F85 Station Wagon, and I have unboxed this one as a police version, but here it is in stock, the 1960 Plymouth Station Wagon. Another really cool kit by Johan. Now we'll begin our adventure of the model kit by taking off the lid of the DeSoto Adventurer kit. And right away we see the wonderful old Johan instruction sheet. This is really cool because it really is just one page printed on both sides. Now this kit is second hand, so somebody did start to work on it. Unfortunately it's the only one I have. But my friend John, he took some precautions, so our glass is inside this, so it doesn't get scratched any further than it already might be. Now here we've got the body. There's a lot of bits falling off here, because I kind of put it together just to fit it in the box again. Now hopefully they used enamel and not lacquer, but here's the body painted in metallic blue. Almost looks like a silver on the roof. Maybe they're going for um, painting it proper, actually. You'd put a silver coat down and then lightly mist over some metallic, but I don't know what happened here. Got a couple of chips I might have to deal with. Anyway, chips ahoy. <laughs> There's our interior right there. Our undercarriage. We've got the hood. Then we've got some more chrome bits, which we'll take a look at all these parts in a moment few of the white old plastic parts trees. There's the engine. Now I think Johan used these universal engine blocks because I don't know they're not I'm not sure the cubic inches of them or whatever. They don't look familiar. You know what I mean? Kind of generic maybe? I don't know. We'll see. There is that last year DeSoto Adventurer grill. Again really cool stuff. We got our tail lights. Well the runner for our tail lights. And uh, rubber tires and whatnot. Now these rubber tires are solid. I think at one time they were flexible rubber, but wow, they're almost like pure plastic. <laughs> anyway, I'll clear this out of the way and then we'll check out those instructions. Here we have side one of our instruction sheet for our USA Oldies 1960 DeSoto Hardtop Adventurer by Johan, a 125th scale plastic model kit. All right, so here is our engine. And we've got right and left hand side, we have exhaust manifolds, we have the cylinder heads as well as the intake manifold, or not really intake manifold, the valley cover I guess, as one complete piece. The distributor is also molded in place. We have right and left hand side valve covers. There's our intake manifold for dual carburetors. However, we do not get dual carburetors. We just get the air cleaner dropping in place but that's okay. Then we have our chassis down below and there are some axles and the inner wheel, the <laughs> very hard rubber tire, 
as well as the wheel covers. And there are axle block locators here. And uh, they were on all four corners underneath. We also have torsion bars, two of them. So you're going to basically, for your chassis, put the torsion bars in first, your axle blocks, then slip the axles in. And that's to align up the torsion bars. Now down below we have the interior assembly, which is very basic as you saw. We have the interior, which is a one-piece tub, including the sidewalls and the seats. A dashboard, which is separate. A rear view mirror drops in place. Then we have our tachom or gear shift and tachometer assembly, which is chrome. And the steering wheel slides in. Now this was a typical piece for Johan. They seem to all have that one. So again, really simplistic, easy to build. This is a weekender kit if you wanted to do it that way. Excellent stuff. And flipping over to the back side of our assembly sheet, we have the hood right here. We also have our body, and there's a cross brace in here, which we'll see in a minute, that has to be removed so the hood will fit flat. We also have the front grill and license plate and headlights that's molded as one piece, a separate radiator wall, the windshield washer bottle, the radiator, and then our firewall in the back here. There's that clear glass. The interior, completed interior tub will go up inside there with the lock washers into the back. Out back, we have the rear of the car, our two taillights going into these holes on the fins, and then our rear bumper going in place. License plate is molded in, but you can always scrape off the 1960 in there and put your own plate in for the uh, proper aesthetic. And then our completed chassis is here. Just apply the battery inside on the wheel apron. And then all this goes up into the body. The whole thing sandwiches together. And then these are not screws, but they could easily be replaced with screws if you want. They are plastic pins, and that locks your whole body together. Now we're going to look at our body and our hood. And here's that cross brace that I was talking about earlier. This will have to be removed in order to get this hood to fit in here flatly. As you can see, it's sitting up quite a bit, actually. There you go. See on the edges. So, yes, remove that cross brace, my good uh, people, <laughs> my good audience. Just saw it right out of there and get rid of the thing. It's not really needed. Okay, anyway, take a look at this wonderful DeSoto Adventure sunken in detail on the trunk lid. It's really cool. You also have all the emblems. There's that license plate I was talking about. Now you can paint this with a raised 1960 if you're doing a showroom display model, maybe at a car dealership or something. We've got your backup lights in here as well, molded in place. Really nice molding on here. There are some seam lines running up inside. You can see the holes in the back of the fin where the tail lights are going to go in. There's the little pieces that are sitting down to attach the body. Okay, we've got this nice trim in here, all the way along the, the edge of our DeSoto, as well as Adventurer script that's raised up here. And I hope I can get this paint off easily enough. <laughs> I hope it's not lacquer. Please don't be lacquer. Okay, anyway. We also have the cowl right in here with our windshield wipers. And again, much like the other Chrysler, the 1955 Chrysler 300 I did, these ones, the windshield wipers, go out like this and that way, as opposed to both going the same way. So again, really nice stuff. Look at the door handle up in here and the nice tall fin. This is that forward look. Again, Chrysler bringing in the jet age in the cars. Now there are some sink marks up into the roof up in here as well as in the back, but a little bit of sandpaper could actually bring this out. So not too bad. What about the hood? Underneath the hood there is a bit of the fire mat going on in here. Again we've got four sink marks, but some these two are raised. One sunken, one semi-raised, so I could easily scrape those out with my number 16 hobby blade. Nice emblem right here in the center of the hood. Again, really nice work from Johan, considering how simplistic they were back in the 60s. These are basically promotional models with some more extra detailing in them, just to bring them out and make them better. Next up, I thought we could look at the components that make up the interior. Basically, we have the interior tub, 
steering wheel with quite a bit of flash in it. Same as the dashboard, lots of flash there. But then these molds were run so much from Johan that uh, if they didn't have flash, it wouldn't be a Johan. No, I don't know. Or it would be a brand new first release Johan. Anyway, we also have the seat belts here, windshield washer, bottle, and plastic axles. Now you might want to replace these with some metal rod, the same diameter. It's up to you. But let's just go bit by bit. So there we have the interior of the DeSoto tub. And you can see some nice, although very light, engraving for the upholstery. Nice pattern on there, as well as the inner door panels, which have the window cranks as well. Now this might be a bit tricky to try to put chrome foil or whatever on, because it is shallow. So uh, best of luck to you. We have four mold marks in the carpet. Sometimes these are hard to get at. Just uh, use a bit of patience. Underneath, nice and smooth. And you can see the little clips, just like the old-fashioned way of doing it, to hold the interior into the body and locate it. Now let's take a look at our dashboard. Again, nice detail on here. Looks just like the DeSoto Adventurer dashboard. Ooh, I do have a bit of a lump right in here. Just uh, in that glove compartment area. I don't know if I can fix that. At any rate, there is a bit of flash here that will have to be cleaned up. A little vent up here for a window defrost or a speaker. Again, neat stuff. <laughs> now, looking at the steering wheel, you can see that great adventurer type wheel, but it's also quite full of flash. So I don't know what you can do about that. Clean it up with files. Fits in the dashboard really nice. Looks about right. Then it would go into your interior. Thusly. <laughs> Just like that. So again, the fit and finish in here is quite nice. Steering wheel might be a little bit tight to the actual seat. The only way to tell is try to put somebody in there. And our seat belts, they have the buckle clips here, but there's a big mold button on top of them, so that would have to be cleared down. Windshield washer bottle looks pretty nice. I always like them. Has a little bit of the sag effect in there, like it's full of water, which is what you want. So overall, our interior will look quite nice. The seat belts you would clip out, paint them, and then attach them into the front seats. They're just lap belts, because back in the day that was basic safety. Next up we have our chassis, and I have noticed something kind of interesting on here. Those little spaces that it shows the holes for attaching to the car are not on this one. It's only one in the back in the center. So, Johan intended you to glue this together later on. I guess the instructions are from an earlier time. But overall, I mean, it's not too bad underneath here. There is a sunken in area for that battery to go into. See right in there. Now, nothing to look at up under here. There are mold marks and whatnot, so I would recommend filing these flat or sanding them out or whatever, just so that that interior bucket will fit in nice and flat. Now, looking over on the other side, you can see a lot of the detail is molded in place. There's our big long leaf springs, our differential drive shaft in the back, as well as our exhaust pipes and the mufflers. There's our gas tank right there. You can see that this is a unibody construction. It doesn't have the full frame like the 55 Chrysler 300 I unboxed a while ago. So now we're getting into the torsion bars, which would anchor in the backs here and here, and then come across and glue up in the front here and here on that cross member. And then you would have your blocks in here and here for the axles to go through. And uh, that's basic Johan for you. Detail is crisp on here. Ooh, mold marks on both sides of the uh, undercarriage. But you can see the sunken in bits here. That's for the uh, pegs to go into. Lots of flash and seam lines. Again, for a simplistic kit, this one does have a lot of flash, but was probably run through the molds millions of times. Too bad they didn't have like a number with these kits, so you knew you know, which casting you got. Probably like 4,567,000. But at any rate, there's our basic chassis. 
Again, easy to put together, easy to detail, and fun for a weekend build. So I brought out my old Chilton's Automotive Manual going from 1950 to 1963, and I noticed I made a slight mistake. The 60 Adventurer is not the last year of DeSoto. It's actually 1961, which actually the 60 looks better than the 61 because the 61 has these cantilevered headlights and this big thing up here on the hood. Whereas 60 is still a little more sleek and streamlined with the dual headlights side by side in that arrangement. But overall, I mean, this is what it is for the last two years of DeSoto's. Now, I'm not too sure which engine this Johan DeSoto motor is based off of, but here I've got the book and it does say that these are the different symbols and years for the engine. So if you have a P letter in front of your engine displacement on your engine block, then that is from 1960. So basically what they're saying is you've got all these different engines here and uh, what the code is for them. So there is a 170 cubic inch straight six, I believe, 225 cubic inch straight six, then the 318 V8, you also have a 361 cubic inch V8, a 383, and a 413. Those would all be optional engines from 1958 to 1963. So again, I'm not 100% sure which engine this is supposed to be in this kit, but it would be either a 318, 361, potentially 383, or 413. These are the sort of things you have to look up. The book, unfortunately, doesn't really mention which engine is in this. All right, so actually I flipped the pages a bit and I found out what engine this would be. So here you've got 1960 PS-1 Fireflight V8, and you also have an Adventurer V8. Now if you go over here, it's a 361 for the Fireflight and a 383 for the Adventurer. And then it gives all these different specifications and whatnot. You have advertised horsepower, 295 at 4,600 RPM or 305 at 4,600 RPM for the Adventurer V8. And there's your torque, 390 at 2,400 RPM or 410 at 2,400 RPM for the Adventurer V8. Compression ratio being 10 to 1 in both. And then we have a camshaft which is chain driven and the oil pressure at 30 miles per hour is 55. I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but there they are. Now looking at this engine block, the real question is, did Johan make this as a 383 or a 318 or what did they do exactly? Because I do believe some of these Johan engines are basically generic because I have seen these in other Johan car kits. So whether it is an accurate engine for this car is questionable in my mind anyway, but maybe some of you guys know it better. Some of the Chrysler guys out here would know it better. Anyway, we have an automatic and we've got our fan belt and pulley as well as the generator on here. There is the cylinder heads with the valley cover. Oh, I thought the distributor was molded in, but it doesn't seem to be. There's our radiator. We also have our torsion bars here, and there's the four blocks. Intake manifold, our exhaust manifolds, the pins for holding the body together, and these rings for holding the interior up, as well as this radiator support wall, which is very flat, so easy to sand clear. It does have mold marks on one side, but none on the other, so I'll just set that over here. There's our engine block, so for you guys in the know, let me know. I think those are spark plugs right there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it makes sense. Got the starter motor underneath. There is actually a serial number embossed in the engine block as well. And your frost plugs. You got that big hole for your axle to go in. <laughs> uh, there's your engine with the transmission pan molded in place. Again, not bad, you know, even if it is a generic sort of thing. There's the cylinder heads, looks nice and smooth. A lot of flash again. Nice detail on the radiator. Torsion bars are simplistic, maybe a bit too fat, I don't know. 
there's the coil right there. Turning it over, you would have to sand this flat on the back. Mold mark, big one, on that intake manifold. You're going to have to get rid of that to make it sit nice and flat. There's those pins. Overall, I don't know. Oops, mold marks right there in the radiator as well. <laughs> but uh, as I was going to say, I don't think it would be too bad to try to rescue this from the Flash Monster. Now, I do have another parts tree I'll just bring up into the camera. Just to move this out of the way. So here you have your firewall with the brake master cylinder and booster, as well as the heater blower motor. You have your battery here, and here's the valve covers, and then you also have your wheel backs. So again, let me know in the comments below which engine you think this is. Somebody could easily detail this with a, an ignition set, or sorry, a distributor pack from one of the manufacturers. You know, aftermarket manufacturers, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you could wire this up and add in some extra details like oil filler tubes and what's missing. But again, you're gonna need some research in order to figure out what all that is. Now, normally I don't add in the tires in with the glass for my review, but there's so few glass components that I thought I would throw them in anyway. So what we have is our glass, and this is done as a one piece, as you can see. So you've got the backing plate here with holes in it, which would go up into the body and our rear window, as well as these runners leading up to the front. Now, despite my friend adding in the extra bit to stop it from getting scratched, it still got pretty scratched, which I'll show in a minute. There's our rear tail lamps, so these just plug into the back of the fins. And then we have our generic tires, again with no names on them, and this nice narrow white wall that's been painted onto them. So, I'll just show you the glass. Boy, oh boy, you can see a lot of scratches, even even on my blanket there, you can see all the white scratches in. So hopefully I can polish this out with some car wax. And same with the front, all those little white scratches you can see. Uh, this DeSoto has been on an adventure for sure. <laughs> Mold marks underneath here, which again could file flat in order to make it sit nice on that interior bucket. And we've got Flash up in here. But like my friend James was saying, better to have Flash than to have a short cast. If you had a short cast, maybe one of the side windows would be missing or something like that. And that's always a bad sign. Anyway, we've got those rear tail lights. There is some neat uh, grooves in here. Or not grooves, but raised portions. Again, looks nice. You'll have to make sure you get all the seam lines and any parting... Uh, bits off of here, oops, in order to make it fit nice and flat into those fins. And then here we have our tire, and not too bad detail. The tread is just lines going around. It's not actually got wiggly lines or anything. Now I do have some other Johan tires, which will probably make it into this kit, seeing as these are rock hard. I don't know if they were actually, nah, they would have been rubber. A vinyl or something. Anyway, that is the adventuring pieces of our DeSoto, and now we can look at the chrome. And here we have our chrome, glorious chrome! And there is our front bumper with the headlights molded in place, as well as the grille. We have our four wheels with hubcaps, the rear bumper. Here is the gear shift lever with the tachometer and the turn signal lights, as well as the side mirror and rear view mirror. We also have a fan and a very nicely done alternator. One thing that I did notice with this kit, because it is second hand, I'm missing those air cleaners. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do on there. Maybe I can just do a single manifold from the parts box or something, or even replace the entire motor, since I'm not too sure what it is. Or maybe not. I don't know. I'll figure something out. Anyway, look at that nice chrome fan. We've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bladed chrome fan on there. Alternator is beautiful. Johan did some really good uh, work with the chrome back in the day. Nice ridges in the top of the bumper here for our DeSoto, and it's got the one screw through it. 
or a hole through it for lining up in the back of the body. There's our front grille. Really nice. You'll notice something here. There's no line right up the middle on these chrome ends, so that's really nice. A little bit of paint detail on here to bring it up. Some of you guys might want to drill out these headlights and replace them with clear plastic ones from AMT or something like that. But I like the way Johan does this, so I'll just tint them up somehow and leave them in place. But again, really cool looking stuff on here. I have to be cleaned up a little because there's seam lines along the edges. But overall, Johan's, Johan has some nice chrome on these older kits. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our Johan 1960 DeSoto Adventurer. And if you love these great old model kits, don't forget to check out our video library to see what else we have in store for you in our unboxing section. And if you like tips and techs on how to build these amazing model kits, check it out in our tips and techs section. So, again, I hope you enjoyed this model kit. If you've built it before, let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Check out the model kits we have for sale at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everybody, happy adventuring, and we'll see you in the next video.